and we are live hello hello <laughs> so i'm live today on the hangout show with sarah griggs now i know lots of you watching this will know sarah because sarah's been very much a good friend of mine and a client and like my go-to person for any kind of website hiccups or anything for quite some time um so yeah this is sarah i've known sarah literally i think from my beginning like when i first started coaching you've been there from the very start haven't you yeah yeah yes yeah, so you've like grown your business alongside mine hi elisa lisa's watching hi lisa <laughs> Lisa's another one who's been with us right from the start as well. We've mm -hmm. literally grown our businesses together, haven't we? Like you signed up to my very first academy. Um, you've been on like my launch program. You've been in my membership from the start. Mm -hmm. So we've always like worked together, haven't we? And yeah. obviously from there, a friendship. And you are absolutely amazing when it comes to websites. And <laughs> if I didn't already say it, Sarah's a, a web designer and builder. Um, and I have my own website, so I've got a WordPress website and the amount of times I'm like, get stuck and I'm like, Sip, help me <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, and that's kind of how we know each other, isn't it? And, yeah. Um, do you want to like, well, I kind of introduced you now. Is there anything you want to like say or anything you want to like add to that? Like tell tell everyone a little bit more about you. So they know you're a web designer, but what else are you? What else do you do? Like tell us a little bit about you. Okay. Um, um, I've got a daughter who's eight. Um, um, live in Lincolnshire. And we love traveling when we can go traveling. Um, is uh, like the thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, um, I've got a challenge coming up, which I'll I'll tell you about later. Um, and I'll put, I'll put the link in the comments as well, if that's okay, Beth. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, like, Sarah is doing. Um, Sarah, till now, has always done um, like one to one builds. I'm new. You've always yeah. done like one to one work. And for about two years now, or longer, might have even been, I've been on at Sarah, like on and on and on and on at her. Sell a program, put something one to many out there, because like everyone knows me and I'm all about working smart and like one to many, making more money, doing less work. Um, so it's obviously natural for me to be keeping on to Sarah. Do, do a course, do a program, do like something group. Um, and she's finally doing it, isn't you? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so your, your launch, um, the launch program. program that yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's like, but at the end of the day, I think everyone's different, and they and like, you're not gonna do it until you're ready to do it. So it's no. like, and now, now is that time. Like you're ready to do it now. Um, yeah. And it's brilliant because, like, if anyone is looking to build a website, hi, Rachel, by the way, if anyone is looking to build their own website or get, like, support with their own website, um, like, I always advise my clients to build their own, like, get onto WordPress and build their own website and gain a little bit of support doing that rather than outsourcing because it's a lot of money to spend building a website for someone else to do it. And then as you grow and your business grows and changes – You've got to pay someone else to update that again yeah. and change it yeah. again for you. So so be so much better to like have a little support to help you do it. Um, it I, I find that the best way, and that's why I keep saying to Sarah, like so many women, especially in my audience as well, who could really really utilize that support. Like like I'm always tapping in and asking Sarah things about my website when I get stuck and stuff. And there's a lot of other women that are the same. So that's what Sarah's doing at the moment. She's running a challenge um and it's more to like test the waters really of how her group sort of offer would look because that's that's what it's about isn't it it's about figuring out what that'd look like for you so you're yeah. trying to like, test the water and that's why she's offering this free challenge so yeah if anyone's on board with it i'll, I'll guess here to pop the links on the comments so that you can join in with that but it's definitely like a really really good thing to to get in on it's much much um better to 
use the opportunities when they like there because otherwise like building a website is really expensive and if you're not like the kind of business that already has the funds there from the beginning to pay someone like Sarah to do it for you then it's hard isn't it it's hard for like people small you know women who are coming into business trying to start from scratch yeah a lot of the time they might have like lost their jobs or it could be like the whole covid situation might have meant they've lost their jobs or it might be that they've had you know young children and then things with work is a bit tricky so often women who come into business who are brand new it's hard for them to like pay for something like that so i really think that this is like an amazing opportunity for people to be able to do this and because the other thing is as well there's not many people who will go straight out to offering that kind of support free while you're like figuring that build out yourself to see how it look and how it work and i think that shows volumes of like the kind of person you are that you want it to look perfect and you want it to work well and you want to see that it's going to work well for your clients before you actually make them pay for it i think that's like a really really good thing that you're doing and it does speak volumes as well um you recently well well how long ago now is this since you managed to quit your job uh, it's a year actually. Oh, has it been that long gosh yeah. it only seems like it was the other day yeah i think it was um 16th of september was my last working day well my last working day in the pharmacy <laughs> so yeah amazing isn't it and like yeah. what a what are like an achievement because there's so many women isn't there that start off like with a business and you had like a total career change when it so like what was it that you used to was it pharmacy oh yeah it's pharmacy <laughs> yeah and it's like it's a big thing isn't it to change career like that into something yeah. totally different and i can remember some of the conversations we had around this in the beginning didn't we and it's like that kind of thing on your mindset when you've like when you come into something so specialized and then you're like oh, i'm gonna completely change that and do something else it's hard isn't it to like yeah. to like step into that change yeah and i mean it, it was um it was a pharmacy that got me into the idea of web design because they spoke to me and wanted me to look at building their website which i never did <laughs> <laughs> but it's like oh, you're not going to have to train to do that. So um, I signed up to do a diploma um, in um, software and learned from scratch. Did two hours every evening, solid, um, just doing my coursework and and yeah, and passed in uh, nine, uh, 2019. Um, and that's, that's dedication, there, isn't it? Because so many people feel like they can't because of the time element how do they have the time to like change their life around and get that freedom when they've got a date like a full-time job and a family but like that just there says it all you work two hours a night every night to get that diploma and then you worked so hard to like make that business and then how long was it from actually achieving your diploma to when you um quit your day job how long was that a year a year that's like yeah. brilliant yeah. what an achievement to go from like getting qualified and then a year later you've got a successful business that's replaced your income you've been able to like quit your day job and then yeah lisa says that's an amazing achievement it is. <laughs> and it's like you that's the thing isn't it like a lot of us get into the business world because we want more flexibility and freedom around our family like I know me and you we our like values are so aligned like family is everything and I know yeah. you were exactly the same like your family comes first before everything and you love doing your family holidays and your family yeah. stuff the yeah. same as me that's why we saw so, like mag like mag magnet magnet you know what I mean? magnetized to each other <laughs> something like that <laughs> and that's why we like get on so well is because our values are just so in alignment and to like achieve that is amazing isn't it and that's why obviously i've always pushed you to go that next step and start selling smarter as well and yeah, do it yeah, like yeah. one to many um but it, with everything you've got to be ready for that next step you've got to be ready for that next level haven't you like i remember these conversations when you were first like in that transition from quitting your job and it was like that was a huge milestone that was a huge step and then when you achieved that it's like oh my god 
yeah it's always like that isn't it like the next step comes and you'll always feel like oh my god this is like a huge milestone and it's those mindset wobbles and those feelings of like that next level and what that next level looks like I don't think it ever like doesn't get as I don't think this is ever easy I don't think it ever isn't scary yeah. like even me now like I'm at this level now where I've been at the same financial level for quite some time and like I've just kept telling myself like I'm okay I'm okay at this level I don't need any more because I'm comfortable but the fact of the matter is my goals and dreams and ambitions grow as I grow so like I have to keep growing my my financial targets is no good like me thinking oh yeah it's okay I'm comfortable because I've got two choices I can stay comfortable as I am right now or I could keep doing better, reaching more women, helping more women, doing more, and then achieving more for my family as well, because that's what it's all about. It's, mm-hmm. it's you know, there's two massive achievements from levelling up and growing. It's that change that you can do for others and the people you're helping, and the change you can do for yourself and your family, and we all deserve that, don't we? Like, we all deserve that lifestyle that we truly dream of and I think the people who achieve it are the ones who overcome the mindset of like feeling worthy like feeling like you deserve that because I think a lot of us hold ourselves back because of like all kinds of feelings in it like oh I don't feel even if we don't admit it to ourselves we might not feel like we deserve it or we might not feel like all these reasons why we stop ourselves from doing things but it's we're all worthy of it we just have to believe we are like yeah, what makes yeah. anyone else more worthy of, of living the life they dream of compared to you like why why are they more worthy than you like we're all equal we're all worthy of anything we want it's just the only person stopping us is us isn't it and yeah it just goes to show like no matter what level you're at you'll always face these you'll always like face that next like that next hurdle yeah. It's, it's amazing and like getting into the whole you know freedom lifestyle being able to like live on your terms on your choice not having to miss out on like you know Christmas or doing just taking a day off with your family because you want to like it's just life changing isn't it I just, I just it so much of Ella growing up and with her being such a, a special baby because she was um IVF and then she arrived early and I just felt that I was missing out so much and it was like when I met you it was like wow yes this is what I want and I did I just had to do it so yeah and you have and you have (laughs) and it's like amazing yeah it's so funny isn't it because like obviously I knew that Ella was uh premature and then obviously when I had uh, Aria Caddy and Caddy was premature like I spoke to I was like really lent on you didn't I I was like oh my god but it just is it just goes to show as well that in when it comes to like the entrepreneurial world having friendships and connections is so important like there's a lot of like coaches and businesses out there that they don't take their connections deeper they don't take relationships deeper and I think and I'm guilty of like putting a guard up to a certain extent as well I like if people get so close and then I'm like oh no more I suppose (laughs) enough But I think like if it's one thing I'm learning more and more is to really like open myself up. And yeah, that does make us vulnerable and make us like susceptible to people who can come in and hurt us. But I think there's so much more beauty to like opening up and really building those relationships because I can hand on heart say that I've got so many clients that have genuinely become friends of mine that have supported me through like hard times personally. And likewise like I've been there for so many of my clients who've you know needed me on a personal level as well and it's like a different kind of level and I think that kind of support is so needed because we only get like Rachel says yes as we grow our goals grow absolutely and Cree says morning Morning. Um, so like it's so true isn't it like we can only get we get support from our family and our like friends outside of our business world but it's a different sort of support and like if there's anything I've learned is that you need that kind of support and friendship bubble from like-minded people as well and why what I mean like-minded I mean in the business sense who like understand business and 
goals and chasing after your ambitions and your dreams in the same sense like that that drive that go get in because like you surround yourself with that kind of person you become that person like you surround yourself with go getters driven ambitious women in business you become that driven ambitious woman in, in business and you go after your dream it's just like a ripple effect and when you don't surround yourself with those kind of people and you surround yourself with like people who are not really in that you end up like staying there you don't really see your full potential you don't go for your full potential like you it's so true you've got to step into that step into it to become a revenue yeah but it's proper magical like when it comes to being able to like go after your dreams and and make your your goals come true so we've got about 15 minutes left i think what we should do right now is maybe think about like what's when it comes to anyone watching this who's like wanting to change their lives and you know like achieve like the kind of thing that you've achieved going from working a day job and thinking do you know what no i want to be there i want to see my daughter growing up I don't want to miss these things i want to have that time and that freedom and flexibility like that's something you've achieved like what would you say to anyone else watching this who wants that as well who's looking at you at me at other women like us who are chasing our dreams and making it happen what would you say to anyone at that stage like what's the biggest thing you could say to them to like um stay determined and have have that main goal but have smaller ones in in between like stepping stones and find somebody that's just as amazing like like yourself beth and yeah. and, <laughs> and just have that back up and and that you need that kick up the bum to make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do and yeah i've been through it before um and know the the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it and and can yeah. teach those things so de being determined to do it is is a main is a really big thing that i was just yeah you know, i've just got to do it now yeah so. yeah and the thing is like like you said there you hit the nail on the head it's about seeing that bigger goal and funny enough i done a coaching session this morning a two-hour session and it was all about like that bigger goal and breaking it down to bite-sized steps and you literally hit the nail on the head that's exactly what it's about is having that crystal clear vision of what you want your life to look like like you know dare to dream big like don't hold back have a crystal clear vision and then it's about like breaking that down so like what are the things you need like what are the goals to make that life come true like what are the main goals so if it's like increasing your money or if it's quitting a day job which includes increasing your money whether it's um finding like a target audience like know what those goals are and then go to the next step break it down again like okay so you know you need to make more money quit your job um maybe find leads so know how to like find people to sell to so like how do you break that down again okay so you need to work out who you're going to sell to and what you're going to sell them and you need to work out how much money you're going to make like every month so you set these targets mm -hmm. and you pull them down don't you and you break them down into smaller bite-sized chunks and do like little targets that will take you step by step to that bigger goal and and it's so it's it's so important that's such a key thing to like to really say and that's a huge valuable piece of information for anyone who's watching this because that is it like that is literally the stepping stone you start from the top and work your way down backwards like that to see what it looks like to see that step because a lot of the time people will like be like oh i've got the vision i've got the idea and what i want but i have no idea what the in-between looks like how to make and that's like the biggest piece of information is to like work backwards, like break it down, isn't it? And that's like what I teach and what I do with like my clients is like we break it down so that we can see what the first step is to start taking it. It's like looking at that, bringing it down and then working through them like that. And the accountability as well, like you said, finding someone who can give you the kick up the ass. And, you know, even though like not everyone can afford a business coach to start off with. And the whole thing is like, 
having a can can do attitude rather than a can't is a must so like instead of if you're sitting there and thinking well yeah it's easy saying like find a coach or find someone who can kick you up your ass but i am going to money to do that that's a can't do attitude that's you wiping the whole thing off the table and thinking oh well it's no good me thinking any more of this because i haven't got the money to do it well instead of thinking like that how about thinking what can i do okay i can't afford to pay a coach right now so what can i do instead that's still gonna get me working towards these goals maybe i could find someone to team up with who is the, in the same sort of predicament as myself or find somebody who wants a guinea pig to help them and like there's so many ways you could do these things there's always a way around like no matter what obstacle is put in front of you there's always a way around that obstacle but you have to have that attitude and you have to switch your mentality into thinking how can i you've got to have a can do attitude not a can't and that's yeah. why like anyone who knows me always says always hears me say my nan always said there's no such word as can't and it's so true and like this i've signed up to um uh intensive mastermind myself um a new one with a new coach um someone i've dabbled with in the past but i've like not gone intense like working with some with with her in this way i've always gone with other coaches but and the first thing she said on our mastermind day when we all got together on friday was she was banning the word can't and like straight away i was like i know i'm like totally in alignment with this coach because that is exactly the thing i say all the time like there is no such word as can't and you have to have that mentality and that attitude to be successful because if the first thing your reaction is well i can't do that it's so right for them they got this or they got that or they can do that but i can't that is like that attitude is not going to get you anywhere is it you've got to have a different attitude you've got to change that attitude and anytime you see yourself or feel yourself thinking like that get a pen and paper and just think right okay switch it around literally write on the piece of paper switch it around what can i do like and that's how you problem solve that's how you find your way around these obstacles that's how you get things done and that's how you hit targets and goals and that's how you achieve success because people don't success doesn't just happen it's not just handed people you know the most successful people on this earth the most wealthy people on this earth like not everyone's just born into wealth like a lot of people assume people are just born into money and it's just not true like people work hard for it and people have that can do attitude and they get out there and they do it and that's that's exactly what it is and i think you know it's, it's really important to like acknowledge that isn't it yeah yeah definitely so if i ever came up with an icon so i would turn it and go how can i and then how can i yeah, yeah. And then, Definitely. and then find that answer of how I can actually do it, and yeah, I'm yeah. working out, and like yeah. even speaking to people, isn't it? Even thinking like, you know, speaking to your husband or speaking and thinking, yeah. right, you know, how can I make this happen? Like, what can I do? Because I often do that with Lee. Like, if I'm feeling a bit like I really want to do something, I really want to do this, or I really want to do that, and I don't know how can I make it happen. We would like sit there and like think of all different ways and things we can do to try and make it happen, and he's. It's really good just to have like a sounding board, isn't it? Just to yeah. like, you know, have that kind of sounding board to help you try and work out how you can. Like, um, it's really important to have that. And I think it's it's a proper game changing attitude, isn't it, to have that. Yeah. Um, because loads of good massive golden nuggets on this session today, on this call. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like goal setting, breaking it down, mindset. It's brilliant um do you have anything you want to add anything you want to say if there was like anything else you want to say to to anyone that you think would really really help them um I'm trying to think now um there's so much isn't there like now <laughs> it down is like this is there's so much like that can help isn't there lisa says yes it really helps to be able to talk it out with someone else it really does doesn't it and like yeah you know you guys know this like you you you're in my academy and memberships and we drop in and we have drop-in sessions and you know some weeks i might not see you for a few weeks where you're like stuck in doing mode and then you might pop up and be like do you know what i'm feeling a little bit stuck i just need to chat 
and it's like having that kind of space isn't it like where you can and even myself I feel that as well and I I need that space where I can just rock up and be like you know I need to get unstuck and it's important that you can like find a little tribe that you can go and speak with find a person you feel like you can go and speak with um you know make sure you're getting that support at home as well as like in a community of people doing the same thing or wanting the same thing and like working towards the same thing um it's important to surround yourself with those people like if you feel like you're surrounded by can't do attitude people like as harsh as it sounds you kind of gotta like get away from that and you know if they are in your immediate sort of area then you need to help them change it as well if it's like a situation where you can't escape because the truth of the matter is you are not going to be able to really push yourself and achieve things if you don't believe you can and if you tell yourself you can't do things or if you've got people in your immediate like area telling you can't do things or making you believe you can't do things so it's about being very aware of that as well and making sure that you know there's always a can element to it like i've said to lee every time we speak and stuff now we're gonna like ban the can't word or the like you know the try even when we say okay well we'll try and do this we're gonna be i've said to him now so we're getting into the habit and we even doing it with with aria as well like teaching her to be like no it's not that you're gonna try you will or you can so we like getting into the habit of of speaking positive as well so it's like oh yeah we're gonna try and do this babe or we'll yeah we'll try or we will do this we will do that it's like yeah so it's and i think it's a really good tool to use because then it like it does it just switches something in the brain and it makes you you know once you believe that and you're like yeah actually i can you will find the way to do it then i remember when i um, was then my, not my family, but my husband's uh, parents kept saying to me, um, are you sure you're going to be okay? Are you sure you're going to be okay? And that made me more determined. Yes, I can do it. I will do it. <laughs> Just to prove it and be like, told you. <laughs> told you I would. <laughs> easier said than done i don't know who this is because it's just saying facebook user um but i will come back and have a little look at who's who's saying that um easier said in, than done in what sense do you mean easier said than done as in like the saying you can but that if that's what you mean then that's the whole point like again if you're telling yourself it's easier said than done of course it's easier said than done but that's the first step you've if, you've got to be able to say it before you can do it like if you can't actually say yeah i'm going to achieve this then you're never actually going to do what you need to do to achieve it being positive so it's easier said than done to be positive but the thing is like nothing is it's just like a, a trick of the mind isn't it it's just you have control you have choice over being positive or being negative like that is a conscious decision that you can make so if like if you think to yourself like you know what your conscious thoughts are so like just a simple trick if you know a conscious thought is i'm never going to be able to achieve this whatever it is write that down on a piece of paper that's the negative thought okay that's the negative conscious thought that you have just put on a piece of paper turn it around turn that around into the complete opposite and just literally write it down i will achieve blah de, blah de, blah whatever it is because that's an attitude now i'm not saying that it's magically by you saying it, it's going to happen because we know that's not you know a thing like you know you might believe in manifestation and stuff like that um but i don't believe that you get anything without actually taking the actions mm -hmm. But for you to take those actions, you need to believe it. And if you don't believe it, you're never going to take the actions. So you have to be, you know, you have to think, right, what can I do? Right, I'm thinking negative thoughts. What can I do about this? Instead of just keep thinking negative thoughts, instead of just thinking it's easier said than done, like instead of thinking there's so many, there's so many hurdles. So instead of just feeling that and just taking that, like think about okay what can you do to feel a bit positive what can you do you could get a piece of pen and paper a piece of pen a piece of paper and a pen 
I <laughs> always fluffing up my words. You could get a pen and paper and you could start writing down the things that you can do. What can I do? Okay, every time I think a positive thing, a, a negative thing, I can write down positives to counteract it. And you can keep doing that. That is something you can do to problem solve. That is something you can actually action to start working on reprogram reprogramming those negatives. So like, you know, that's something you can do right now. There's no reason why you can't just right now, this minute, go and get a pen and paper and start writing these things down. Like all the things that you feel like cloud you with negativity, all these feel feelings you get, all these hurdles, as you say, write them down. What are those hurdles? What are those negative feelings? What are those? What are they? So write them down so you can clearly see what they are. And that's your first step. That's you problem solving. Because the next step is switching them and counteracting them with a positive instead and saying, okay, no, I can. And start problem solving. Start thinking how you can change this around. If you don't practice positive affirmations, I really highly suggest you start looking into practicing positive affirmations um, and looking into that because positive affirmations are really, really powerful for rewiring your thoughts and your negative thoughts and switching them into positives. And a lot of people will feel ridiculous telling themselves like, I am confident or I am whatever it is that you feel you're not. A lot of people think, oh, well, saying it is not going to make it. It actually does because our brains are really powerful things. And your subconscious mind is the thing telling you you're, you can't do something or you're not something. And that can be rewired. Like physically, that can be rewired. So it is so really important to like acknowledge this negativity and think, right, what am I going to do to change that? Um, use the fall to help you stand build on the firm foundation of the rocks of failure we learn more by getting things wrong I used to think mistakes were negative but now I see them as positive it teaches me how to do it and the more I get wrong the more likely I'll find the way to get it right exactly that is so true like again it's all to do with the attitude like you could have this attitude of everything goes wrong in my life or oh, all the stuff if anything can happen to me it's always me like I could say that like anyone who knows me knows the shit storm of a year I've had but instead of me sitting here being like oh poor me this has happened that has happened and I know this sounds harsh but it's the reality like you can either sit there and be like all these things have happened to me why me why me instead you can take that as a learning as a lesson exactly like Chris saying and and just turn that into a, a positive like you've experienced that you've you felt that and you can really harness that into something else and and you can do good with that you can do positive with that you can switch your thoughts around there's so much more that you can control than you realize and when you start like just challenging yourself challenging your own behavior challenging your own thoughts that's when you will really really start to see that you can actually change. Rachel says, challenge yourself. <laughs> exactly. When you think a negative thought, ask, why do I think that? Or what if that happens instead? Yeah, exactly. And that's what it's all about. It's about knowing that you can't control external circumstances. You cannot control what happens around you or to you, but you can and the one thing, and this is so powerful, the one thing you can control is how you react to that. You have full control of how you react and how you deal with the situation. It's totally within your control. You just got to know it, believe it, and like start like acting on it. Um, my friend used to say, stop having a party. My friend used to say, stop having a pity pot party yeah like a pity party and that's so true like and it does sound harsh doesn't it like if someone's feeling a bit down or saying you know like offloading like lisa says she gotta go we'll catch up no worries we're just wrapping up anyway lise um it's so true like it can sound quite harsh on times and i'm not saying like bottling and don't ever deal with it because you have to deal with these things you have to feel the feels and it's okay to feel them feelings as well it's okay to feel sad it's okay to feel angry it's okay to feel any feelings you have to feel them and you have to ride through them but it has to stop you can't just keep feeling that forever 
you can't let them feelings like control you or define you it's like feel those feelings allow yourself to feel those feelings yeah feel angry feel sad because you deserve to feel all of that but don't let that stop you or define you or, or you know don't let that be the thing that stops you from achieving something you want to achieve like you still got that within your control you can still think you know yeah okay i've had a shit time i've had this happen or i've had that happen i feel broken i feel this i feel whatever but that doesn't control how i react to this that doesn't mean that i can't stand back up and carry on like literally you can control how you deal with things never ever ever bottle them never ever push feelings away or like i'm learning now to just go with it like and cry when i feel i gotta cry i used to bottle it and feel like oh there's a place in the time and i don't want to be crying around people and i don't want to do this and i i, I need to show strength and i need to... if i feel tears well enough i let them flow and i will cry at any situation any so like i'll just leave it flow because i know that's good like feelings are good feel them let them flow but don't let them stop you don't let them define you don't let them floor you because you can control that um anyway i i'll come back in and see who it is that was posting and if you want to reach out to me personally you're more than welcome to i can't see who it is from here but i will have a little look after um we're gonna wrap it up now as we've run over a little bit more than half an hour um we're gonna say love you and leave you and i'm gonna say a massive massive thank you say for coming on and giving us your amazing knowledge um because there's so much to be learned there and i would say to anyone who needs to get a website done or anything like that jump on this opportunity with sarah and learn how to build one yourself because it is like a really really good opportunity that she's offering um yeah gonna love you and leave you and i'm gonna say goodbye Bye, Thank everyone. you so much, Meg. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.